we are, we're here in the kitchen. I think it's on. It has the live up in the corner. I'm just gonna move that up for height bit a little bit more. Up, 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 down, down, down. So we're there. And see if that gives us any backlight. And then I think we're there. Yep, we're okay there. We can see all of that, beautiful. We're here making a lunch board. I'm a mess, I'm always a mess. Hey Jeff, always a mess, always a mess. It's not about that. This is real stuff, real time, real cooking. I wanna thank Jackie. Um, she's just been wonderful to me. She made me this, cause I'm a mess. And all I'm thinking is that looks like a football thing, but it's not really a football thing. It's actually for me to put on my island. So now I have a cloth to wipe with the whole entire time. So we are here building a board today, doing a luncheon board. I've got tons of stuff here that we're going to work with today. You have choices. You can choose whatever lifestyle eating you want to, whether it be keto or vegan or vegetarian or pescatarian or harmatarian or farmatarian or carnivoretarian. I'm lost, okay? You just got to stop the word messery. I can't get it all the time. I learn. I do the best I can. Here's what I do know. We're going to use protein, <laughs> vegetables, fruit, and fiber are going to be a huge amount of what we're doing, okay? Um, somebody was at my house this morning. I was out training clients. I think I know who it was. I'm just going to say it because it might have been Shannon. I know she was doing rocks. Look what Shannon made me. Right? These were on my doorstep when I got home. I went and did training for couples. Isn't that cool? Those are my rocks. Okay. We got a board. What do you like to eat? Now, I was out at Ralph's Market and it's a local market of ours. And I am going to use a Gouda smoked, Gouda smoked with this because I have Gouda, which I didn't pull out. Oh yes, I did. Oh yeah. Because I'm going to use Gouda cheese to complement it. So this was a local one I thought I'd use. I thought I would use that for our um, meat in the middle. Dylan's a carnivore, it is what it is. Um, He's not fully focused on it, but it is a huge portion of, of what he eats. And we vary it up. So this is local. It's pretty cool. Let's see what this one looks like. There's the Gouda. Isn't that cool? That's what she said. You're going to pull it open? I talked to her at the counter. She goes, it's a great, it's great for the plates. So somebody said to me, Kim, what are you talking about? What a board, what a plate. I'm going to say it. In the old days, are you ready? In the old days, we used to take round Tupperware containers and put cheese and vegetables and fruit and stuff in the middle and we would serve it to you at lunchtime. Now we call it a plate, a board. It's just, it's just tech, it's just talk. So you could design a board nicely. I've got a hard behind here. Different colors can highlight it. If you're looking to do like an Easter brunch with somebody, that would be a good way to do it. I have, instead of using the actual board, here's a little technique for you. I don't actually use the boards because they're hard to clean. So I find that these flexi are way better and then I can just clean them off. I'm going to put my um, vegetables that I need in my cleaner here, my water. I'm going to use tomatoes. We're going to use peppers for vegetables. And then we're going to use, I'm going to do something cool with the pearl onions. So I'm using pearl onions. They were actually, pearl, pearl onions. Kim! Pearl mushrooms. Does that sound better? Pearl mushrooms. Celery. So I've got four vegetables in there. I've got two reds, a white, and a green in there. How's that sound? Good? So I'm just going to let those sit in there for a few minutes. Wash that up. I got it in my little spin dryer, so we're going to leave that. What I am going to get ready next is the infusion that I'm going to use on the mushrooms. So I'm actually going to heat my mushrooms, but I'm going to marinate them first. And 
I am going to use a bruschetta marinade and a, where did it go? Garlic and bruschetta. A two complement that would really go together as well would be to put a um, bruschetta with a Caesar, Caesar Greek. The Greek is another really good marinade. Um, again, just the Epicure ones are no fillers going on. So I'm going to use the bruschetta. Shout out to Amy. She's given me flax oil. I'm going to create a marinade here. There's a reason I'm doing this. So a little bit of bruschetta in there. That's one. Number two. Uh-huh. Why? Because I need it for bread. Number two, flax oil with sage and apple stuffing. So now a sage and apple stuffing. Infusing my oils off to the side. That's going to go as well. I am using flaxseed and sage infusion with a bread and I am using a bruschetta and an infusion of flaxseed oil with mushrooms. So we're going to infuse those mushrooms. I already had these washed once. These are my pre-washed ones. The ones you saw me so take out of here. The organic were cheaper. Those are other half that aren't done. I'm going to take my mushrooms. Mmm. Bruschetta. Flaxseed. I'm going to marinate that. Marinate it, and I'm going to let that sit. Now, you have options. One, if you are on the raw diet and you don't cook and you're on a raw, leave this for about an hour, and you will get a bruschetta, flaxseed, mushroom, keto type. I'm eating it. Why? Because I can. It's, veg it's raw. It's vegetarian. It does not be cooked. But... If I do want to cook it, which I will cook it, I am cooking mine, not yet. My gosh, that tastes good. I'm going to put that off to the side, and that's one of my vegetables that's going to go onto my plate. I just want that to marinate for a minute. I want the sage and apple to marinate for my potato, garlic, cheese bread. So this was an artisan bread. Again, I got it at Farms, Farm um, Ralph's Market out in Langley. And we're not, we are not gluten sensitive. Um, nothing like that. And I'm going to cut these in half and then I am going to brush them. It's going to give a golden top to it. And then we're going to have those as dips instead of maybe a cracker or something. So I'm going to use that as my dip, but I don't need that just yet. First thing I want to do is get those vegetables under control and the meat. So I'm going to leave those vegetables. I'm going to get my meat cut up here. Depends on what you want. Um, the fine ones, it's really nice for the fine sausages. Really, really nice on the plates. But if you're looking for infuse, know that when you do infuse, and I do tell this to Dylan all the time, the more flavors you put in something, the more process it is. Um the more processed it is. So if you're looking for less processed, you are looking for, you know, processed meats have nitrates in them. Not always happy for a lot of people. So I, I don't eat that part, but Dylan eats that part. Um, I'm going to leave that. So he'll eat that, but it does come with those little bit of nitrates. You'll see celery salt also, just so you know, as an alternative to nitrates. You'll see a soy lecithium as a alternative to nitrates going on. Um, they're all processed. It is what it is. If you're going to have a meat like this, um, you are going to have uh, sodium nitrate in it. It's all about how much you eat of everything. 
what your process is about. Da -da -da. Na -na. I'm going to set this. So here's my set. If you want to, you could have that center. What I am going to do is I'm literally going to put my vegetables on this side, my middle, my fruits. My vegetables, my middle. So that tells me that my design is going to be that cheese in the middle. And I'm going to go with that. His favorite I picked up for him. These are nice little cheeses. That will be his middle. NCAA Div 1 Basketball University United States. Who's the best basketball players at that level um, is the finalist today. So we're doing that. So now I've got that little center going on around there. If I wanted to, I could definitely put my meats around that. But because of the way it is, I don't really want to have my meats around it. I want to just be able to pull it around. So I think I'm going to put the other cheese around it as opposed to the meats. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the meat on both sides of it. And then I'll put that Gouda in the middle. I can smell the smoked in the, in the um, Gouda. I can definitely smell that going on. Now, one of the things that I um, always like about Epicure's boards is the fact that if I've just cut meat and I don't want to use that board, which I will chuck my meat off to the side, now I have to go and clean my cutting board, which drives me nuts all the time. Anybody that does this knows it drives them nuts. Um, one thing I like about Epicure, nice and thick, nice handle. Flip it over. It's got sticky both sides. Now my meat is not involved in there and I can get rid of that. So having that, I'm gonna use my smaller knife going on. Oops, actually, the wrong knife. Switch up, wrong knife going on. I am going to use this only for my vegetables and my fruit. Really funny thing today. So I go into Save on Foods. I have a roll-up rack, which is super handy, and it make, goes across my kitchen sink, and it allows me when I'm cooking to make an extra sink, roll it up. I love these little, does it matter that the celery, I'm gonna cut it anyway. Where did my lid go? So this is my little salad spinner thing. That just gets my moisture off. Pretty cool, eh? I have my vegetables. I'm going to take those off to the side. My rack has all been cleaned for this because this is where I'm going to cut it from, which I love about that roll-up rack. And then what I'm going to do is the strawberries. Really funky thing on the strawberries. Grapes were $6.99 a pound. Um, and then the ones that were $4.99 a pound were like disgusting. And they put them in such big packages that it comes out to being like $20 for a thing of grapes, which I personally can't afford. So I'm thinking, what can I do? It did take me a minute to walk around. I go down to the organic. What does organic mean? It means that it doesn't have pesticides on it and it hasn't been sprayed. And certain foods take up a lot of pesticides. Strawberries will absorb pesticides like rock stars. That's bad. So the fact that they do that, I don't really like strawberries that I don't know are organic. The only time I can afford them is during um, BC grow season. These are organic. These were 70% cheaper than the grapes that were all pesticide. Just saying, organic. $2.99. Why? Because they can only are only good for so long, but isn't that perfect for me? I went this morning, shopped. Now I've got these beautiful organic strawberries, which I would never be able to afford at any other time because our season's not here. And I'm going to use strawberries on there instead of grapes. Why? Because I'm a budget conscious type person and I'm very concerned with that. I'm going to let that sit there for a second. So some of the things I want to do is I want to create little... Cut if I want to do something creative with the tomatoes. Personally, I don't like creating.
creative with the tomatoes. Everything has to be like so uh, put together. So I'm going to take my board. I'm going to keep it beside me here and add my flavors to it. So we'll keep that there from which we can see that. And I am not actually going to cut my tomatoes. Why? Because I don't like them cut. <laughs> I don't care. Dylan won't eat them today. He eats so much tomato. It's pretty wow. So then we're also going to have red pepper. And I'm going to use my steamer simply for my compost because <laughs> I can chuck it out when I'm done. It's very expensive right now. I don't know about everybody else, but I'm definitely finding the expense of food is biting me a little bit. So I feel that. I'm going to use those red peppers. Again, if you're picky about what it looks like, take off the extras. If you're not, you're simply putting it into strips. They always say with vegetables that you should go down the line of colors. If you're on budget constraint, um, variety is harder because it becomes more expensive. So I would definitely start with the greens, the reds, the purples, those type of things going on. Um, and go down the color line from there if you're budget constraint. Always check at the beginning of the day, the organic section, because that's a little tip for shopping, because they'll have to put out what is going to retire or expire, as they say. Um, they'll have to put that out there, and it'll usually be gone pretty quickly. So now I'm going to take that celery. Same thing, nice and easy. Celery, celery. It splits up the red if you're looking for creative. But creative is good. It's fine. But most people don't have the time to do this. And really, what people are looking for is something they can just literally cut in four strips, put together. Know they're getting their little vegetable thing going on there. I'm going to put a couple mushrooms in there that are raw that he can dip in there. So we've got the vegetables set up. I'm going to create a dip for those vegetables. So now I have options. I'm just going to use little containers here, um, little jar container. And I am going to make a three onion, simple measure. Now you got options. If you don't want to use sour cream, you can use yogurt. You don't even have to have animal yogurt. You can have, don't you dare, you can have a dairy-free yogurt. So that is an option as well. People that got um, issues with that they can't digest animal sugar, lactose, you might have to go with a non-dairy type version. I am going to use mayo and sour cream again if you're conscious about that you'll be going to the zeros going on um, people ask me all the time isn't the processing more it's just a little less fat in it it's probably a little bit more processing a heating process but i don't think it's anything majorly bad thing about cow is that with the cow you get protein fat, sugar, you get every single element of it. That's what's important with the cow. You get calcium and you get vitamin D. And unfortunately, we are in an area where calcium and vitamin D are priceless because we are above that 40 second parallel. So we've got to be super conscious of that. This is my three onion dip. People are like, how much you putting in there? I don't know. I don't know. And then I'm trying something really funny. And I'll show you that in a sec. So I'm just going to stir this up. I like these little jars. They give a good measure for me. If I was conscious about it and I looked at it, I'd be able to say, hey, that's a half a cup that we used of dip. But I mean, if you're using sour cream and you're using yogurt and you're not using huge amounts of fat in there and you're not using mayonnaise, it's probably... Not as fatty as you think it is. I'm going to put that off to the side. And then I'm going to take that and just simply put that with my vegetables. Okay. I am going to heat my little pan. All my hang stuff. I'm 
is there. Oh yeah. It's just a matter of me getting my thumb under it. My pan. If you're raw, you don't have to cook these. I am going to heat those though. So from there then, because I only use vegetable on my cutting board there, um, I'm going to put my, my fruit on there as well. So now it's just a bit. Oops, get rid of the fruit. Spin out the strawberries. Where did I put my little spin hat? Spinner. Where'd you just go? Really? I had that in my hand. Do I have to do this by hand, people? Oh, I covered it. That's too funny. All right, my little spin thing. I love this thing. My other ones, I don't have to spin. Just some strawberries. So strawberries are one of what we call the dirty dozen. Any of my students understand that dirty dozen thing quite well? Dirty dozen is the 12 fruit and vegetables that get absorb the most pesticide that you should probably buy organic. And then there's the clean 15, which are ones that you don't have to be concerned of. So if you've never heard of that, it's called the clean 15 to the dirty dozen. Strawberries are a dirty dozen because their skin you don't take off and it's very thin and it absorbs the pesticides. Makes sense, right? So I did strawberries and I'm doing apples and I'm doing oranges. Da -da -da. This will be a nice, I don't even know what time the game's on. Does anybody even know what time the games start at? I should know all this stuff. I try and stay enthusiastic for it, um, for Dylan, of course, because he loves it. But you know, I got a lot of stuff going on. And I probably have to, he's probably betting me today as well on these games. So Gonzaga or Baylor, are you kidding me? Gonzaga is like 35 and 0. I got nothing. 35 and 0. Gonzaga's winning it. If they don't, I will cry for everybody who's involved in the Gonzaga organization. I will cry my eyes out. Okay. We watch Dylan, Dylan's rookie year. Okay, so Dylan's lost his, his, his crap a couple times. <laughs> really? Right? Um, they lost semifinals. They lost finals. So heartbreaking. One basket. Courtney got it in. C got it. But a VIU came back. So they lost it by one in Dylan's rookie year. And Dylan went from... You know, he gets gets to university and they're like, okay, you're like 15th on the bench. You're never coming off the bench to within two months of killing himself, working his butt off. He's top line in his rookie year. And they, but he had to work for it. He had to earn it. And then they lost the championship by one basket. I, Baylor and Gonzaga, if that happens, I'll, I'll, I'll die. And then the next year, Dylan's next year, are you ready? The next year, they play 18 games. They're 18 and 0. 18 and 0. They are top across Colligate in Canada. March 12th. Knock, knock, knock. COVID's here. You won the championship, Dylan. You can't go play for it. I'm sorry that happened. <laughs> so in his second year. They, they take the chance, they go, lose one game, one game, take it, take Pack West, they get shut down, they ain't going to their tournament. Holy moly, can you believe that? So that was his second year. So now the third year, where are we? Everybody's like, we're redshirting. I'm like, no, we're not. The third year doesn't even exist in sports. It just doesn't. So his third year was wiped out. And what has he been doing? Putting on size. Putting on size in the weight room in the studio here. Putting on size. Getting his flexibility. If he'll let me, I'll post the um, picture of him doing a longevity squat on a dumbbell. And he's 6'4". So I'll post that. So he pivoted completely and thought, mind over matter. How do I do this? He made a space upstairs where he did his little meditation. 
And now they're going back. Now he's been picked up by um, University of Fraser Valley. So now he's at UFV. Um, he starts the day he was supposed to start at UFV this year. He got a call. We're shut down. Oh my gosh. So here we are again. He's shut down again. And he hasn't got to, to UFV yet, but now he's up to U Sport. Now he's at a whole new level. Let's see how he does. He's got a bit of size on him because I've been cooking like this for a year for him. We've been doing some heavy lifts. If you have any questions about squats, uh, anything to do with back, legs, or chest, by all means, chuck them out there to me. I'll get that information. Go back and hashtag watch the um, squat video for sure. And he put on size. And now where are we going? The sun's out. We're still locked down. We're pulling out the slings. We're pulling out the skipping ropes. We're putting the speed on and we're getting the cardio up. So now we're going into that phase of it. And my students always ask me, what are the phases? I'm like, I'm telling you as we go along here, I multitask. I'm going to put that off to the side. So now I need to look at this. I'm going to cook the mushrooms. So I'm going to get those heated up. And I'm going to slice my bread up here. Okay, so I'm going to keep that on low. Drizzle that oil. Oh my gosh, that is going to be so good, those mushrooms. Da -da -da -da. I'm just going to let those simmer in there. So we're going to heat those mushrooms up. I need to cut up the Gouda cheese that we're going to use with the Gouda smoked sausage. Da -da. Da -da. Where's my board? I love these things. I just pull them out of everywhere. <laughs> the chef's knives from Epicure are phenomenal. Super, super sharp. They work well. The little um, prep knife is the prep pro knife is I've got three of them now. And I'm giving one away here to Sunny. Sunny is Sunny's got Dylan's. Um, how do I put this jumper freezer ready to go? So Sunny of our fitness. He is making Dylan a vertical jump appliance. We're recycling. Ha too cool. eh? We might see that today. We're trying to organize that, but we're also trying to be COVID safety because Sonny and I are not in the same pool together. But he's dropping that off. We're going to work with that afterwards. So we're working on the jump phase. And I'm going to give Sonny some stuff here that I know he'll appreciate and utilize. If you're in my local area, um, Save On Food is a local store and it has all the crap, the Cracker Barrel on sale. So this is the Gouda from the Cracker Barrel. And there we go. We got our cheese going around there. We've got now two cheeses. We've got our one meat. I don't really do a diversified amount of meat. And then I need to make my dip for the fruit. And I had options. The two options I have a choice from is a baked apple because I have apple in here. But then I thought it might not go as well with the strawberry. It would have went well with the grape. So then I had to pivot. And now I'm using our berry. Summer berry, why? Diabetics. We gotta be very careful on the diabetic thing for people. Um, this is one that they can have. It's organic cane sugar, small amount, raspberries, hibiscus. It's hibiscus and strawberries and organic robust. So that's what draws the flavor out. Oops, I'm at the bottom of my jar. I gotta open another one. Open another one. So I am going to put this in with a with just a plain yogurt because I always find in the yogurts they just put far too much sugar. Like far too much sugar. And I want it to be a Greek yogurt, so I'm going to use a thick yogurt. I don't need to use a non-dairy yogurt because Dylan doesn't have any allergies that way or anything. So I'm going to use a Greek one that is a little thicker. Again, it was on sale organic it won't the dates I'm good then I'm going to take my berry
That's going to be my flavoring. Do the mushrooms, do the mushrooms, brown the mushrooms. Oh, I can use this one now. And this will be for my fruits. What I like about the about um, adding the impactful flavors from Epicure, I, I did for years buy dips and stuff, but I found there being the two of us and I wasn't really dip heavy, we wasted food. This is a great way to prepare just the amounts that we need. It doesn't go bad. I can just put it back in the jar, put the lid back on it, and we can have it a little bit later as well. And just to show you, that adds beautiful color to it. You see my color? Uh, yep, there's my red. So that's going to be for my fruit. This is too cool. I'm going to put my little fruit thing there. So now I've got to dip all the way through. I'm doing my mushrooms, cooking the mushrooms up here. So inventory. We've got four vegetables, two cheeses, one meat, three, veg three fruits, and a yogurt dip, and a sour cream and mayonnaise dip, and then a bousson in there. And what we're missing is the bread action that we need to go on, which I have the oven heating for. I should have used my air go on that. So now what I'm going to do is take my fused apple. I'm actually going to do a little bit more. We have really found out that this is awesome. If you are looking to add more oils in, I'm telling you, you can't even tell this flaxseed. So I've, I've marinated it. So I'm using Epicure spices, infusing them. Oil's got a bad rap, a real bad rap. So just don't let the bad rap get to you, okay? No bad rap. And portions are always your control when you're talking about your energies in and out, correct? We have high energy output. We need high energy input. So that high energy input, I'm actually going to slice these up now. The high energy input, we got to have our carbs we got to have our oils. Those are our energy burners, right? Carbs and oils. Our proteins, generally, the idea behind the proteins is that they're builders for you. So when you're sleeping and you've had your proteins, their job is to repair the muscles and the inflammation damage and to make sure the bones are getting the nutrients they are feeding as well. And that's all done through that oxygen system. What else you want to know? I feel like an encyclopedia. Okay, and then I have, I have my pan out here. There it is. All I'm doing is brushing my bread. Why? Because it adds oil to it. What does oil do? It's heavy. Slows the, slows the, the carbohydrate in it <laughs> oh and don't even get me started on the bread thing and everybody don't be obsessive with your food eat it because you like it try and infuse some healthier options into your food um, don't start starving yourself don't get on the gravy train of the whole you know I have to diet 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 we're done with diets diet means diet let's just learn foods that we can eat we can tolerate that we love to eat okay and I'll help you to learn how to do that. And I would say that, you know, if people said to me, you know, how do you know what you're doing works? <laughs> well, I feel like I have enough energy. I am 53 years old. I exercise regularly and I teach it. You guys see me. I'm your instructor. My young little athlete has fantastic skin. I don't know if that means anything. Um, he works out regularly. He has good teeth. <laughs> he plays a high-level sport. Nobody thought an 18-year-old was going to be able to hold his own against 30-year-olds. So I don't know. People say, how do you know what you're doing is working, Kim? Proof in the pudding? I don't do things ego-based. This is beautiful. Okay, so now all I've done 
I'm going to turn my mushrooms off and those will stay heated. So all I've done is brushed like a bruschetta. So I use the bruschetta infused flax. Bruschetta infused flax. Oh, kicking that off to the side. Chucking that in on a broil. On a broil. Beautiful. Chucking that in. So here's where we are at. We have our whole plate ready to go. Ta -da. I am going to Should put that on the vegetable side. That's bad, Kim. We'll put a little fork in there for that on that side. So if you don't want the raw mushrooms, you can have the heated mushrooms going on. And then later, what we're doing, I'm trying a new thing out, and I thought I would share this with you as well while we wait for this to cook. So I'll just share my very last thing that I'm going to cook with you guys today. And you can see how I am all over the place, but I am like every other person. That's what your kitchen looks like, organized or not organized. This is the item that started us in the first place. So what I have done is... Where's my container? I'm going to do zucchini. I have options. I can do it as a long zucchini and cut it. But what I really want to do is I want to do my mandolin. And what I'm going to do is take my zucchini. I'm not going to use the safety thing because this is super big and I won't, I'm only going to use half of it. Other than that, I would never do this without the safety. And I'm making for later Sure those aren't burning. This is coming later. We're making zucchini chips and guacamole. So zucchini chips and guacamole. I'm having those during the game. So in the ergo, I have an ergo here from Esther. My ergo. These make perfect chips. Okay, I can smell that now that it's on. I'm going to grab that out. And now I've made my own. Perfect, right? I want those cool, though. I do not want those heated. So for now, I'm going to take them off, put them on their side plate till they cool down. Oh, it's such a beautiful, because what happened is it left it on the bottom, and then it's super crispy, like the oil. It's not hard at all. The oil made it just look brown. And then the bruschetta smells beautiful, like absolutely beautiful. Okay, I'm just going to eat without yet. I wish that we had 4D. So you could use crackers, correct? You could use rice crackers. You could use any crackers. 
I'm not going to go through the 50,000 different marketing options of crackers. That will drive me insane going on. So we have for our plate, this is so exciting because it, it's done. We have for our plate, and I'm going to put it off to the side here. When the game's ready, our plate's ready. What do you think? Fruit, dip, cheeses, meat, mushrooms off, mushrooms off, right? That's going to go there. <laughs> Holding that there. We have our bread, bruschetta to go with that. And then I am doing zucchini chips. I think I'm gonna do more than that because they're gonna be awesome and Dylan's gonna love them. So I think I'm gonna do a few more than that. Did you just see what I did with that? I hope not. You're like, Kim, that was so like you. Now what I do like about the mandolin, I'm safe. So then, from here, we go. Till it gets down. Woof! How many we got? Half? Yep, just the last piece. Beautiful. That should be about, what do you think that is in a measure? A cup? Do you think that's a cup measure? So one, exactly one half of our zucchini will be, if you are doing the Epicure Challenge, just over a cup. So my one half of medium zucchini, half a cup. Now I gotta marinate it though. So here comes the oil again. Restaurants aren't as healthy as we are. So I have to leave this in here. And yes, I'm leaving this in here for probably about half an hour. But because I'm going guac with that, I am going to do a little bit of roasted garlic on there. I better pinch it because roasted garlic and Epicure because it's organic is super, super flavorful, super flavorful. I don't want to do too much. We also have a salt, pepper and garlic, which is really, really nice too. I don't have mine. I ran out of mine. Okay. Then I have to let this sit. I have to let that sit and marinate. Two, my very last part is my bowl. I already have my other prep bowl I'm using. So I need my, I have my little gookie thing. These are actually starting to come on sale. Nice. Out we go. Oh, it's got a little bit of, a little bit of brown in it. That's okay. Ah! rolling we're good not too bad on the brown I go ahead do that I'm so lazy squish squish it all out super simple to do so super simple it's beautiful it's got all the peppers in it it has um, what's this one got in it? Onions, sea salt, red garlic, pepper, garlic, spices, the herbs I can find out on the other sheet. But then I got to press. I got to press. My lemon in there. I'm using lemon still lime because I don't have lime. What? Done. Fork, yeah? You'll even see people, if they want to, for a little bit of guac, you could add a little bit, just a tad. What does the oil do? It gives that little bit of fluff to it. Nice. 
And now we have that. Their little prep bowls are perfect. They do the exact amounts that I need. Beautiful, and my three edge. Why, because it works? Everybody always asks me, Kim, why do you do it that way? I'm like, because I'm left-handed. Well, it's made for right-handed. I know, people. Left hand, it's a real thing, people, it's a real thing. Scissors are a nightmare, just saying. Okay, so then we have the guac ready to go. Perfectly ready to go. I'm not gonna do the chips yet. I'm gonna hold off on those, but I will do a video. I'll be doing the chips a little bit later. So again, our little prep bowls here. I'm gonna put this on. Don't want a lot of air on there to get in there. We are good to go. That's gonna be setting. So our afternoon for our NC double A and and with Amar um Amar, with Sunny might show up to the with the with the jump up on top of freezer. We have our board plate ready to go, whole board plate, with our um, artisan bread that's got flaxseed bruschetta on it. I have my guac ready to go, and I am marinating my zucchini chips, which will be chips because it cooks it perfectly in there for later. And then we have our whole entire, and we're ready to go. And we will end up with our infused water. So there we are. That is our board discovery going on. It's your flavors. What I like to do is mix and match my flavors. On Wednesday, I'm going to be cooking um, in the Spice Divas, so we'll be over there, and we're going over all the vault stuff. Vault stuff is stuff you can't get. And one of the things that's coming up I wanted to show people, so we got to keep our eye on this one. This one's coming up, I believe, in April. Only comes up one time a year. Yeah, and it's barbecue time. So we're watching. Wednesday, I'll go over all that kind of stuff that's um, coming up. And I'm also bringing up what's called a pantry club coming up. So today we've done fit split. We did feet to fingers, moving all that out. We've got our brunch ready to go. Tomorrow, which is Tuesday, I am back here tomorrow for the lunch and lectures on Tuesday tomorrow. And tomorrow we are on joint actions, again, developing that program so you yourself can design a wellness program for yourself. That's what we're here doing. And you are helping me develop my curriculum for my program that I'm going to do in the future here. So thank you very much for being a part of this. Um, Sunny, I got your, your, your member appreciation gift. You know we're going to exchange that. Maria, I also need to get you yours this week as well. So we got those two going out. Enjoy. We're here for April. Schedule is under announcements. The classes are under guides. And all of what we're doing is in topics under cooking, classes, and exercise. Topics, cooking, classes, and exercise. Schedule in announcements. Yes? So we're out of here. Have a good afternoon. This was the last um, Spartan race I got to run before they shut us down. Have a good one. See you in the next live.